Life's a game, the world's a stage, and we are merely role players, where theatrical people play role playing games. I'm Matt Boothman, and I'm your compare for this main house production. Here on Merely Role Players, we improvise stories to entertain you and to entertain ourselves, because where'd be the fun otherwise? And we use role playing games to keep the story going places even we can't see coming. Because as theatrical people, we're all about maximising the drama. This episode is part of our current main house production, Vigil Fear Itself. To tell this story, we're playing Monster of the Week, a role-playing game by Michael Sands, published by Evil Hat. So please take your seats in the main house. Tonight's production is about to begin. Vigil, a merely role player's main house production. Fear itself, Act 3 of 5. Hi there, my name's Alexander Pankhurst and I play Graham the Summoned. Graham's just your average accountant who happens to be a demon and is destined to bring about the apocalypse. I'm Ellen and I play Jess Butterworth the Spooky. Jess is a Sheridan local born and bred. A voice in the back of her mind keeps telling her she's bigger and better than this town. It's about time Jess showed Sheridan how badly it's underestimated her. Hi, I'm Chris Starkey and I play Cameron Jarvis, the wronged. Cam's parents and sister were killed by ghouls when he was just 10 years old, while on a camping trip near Sheridan. Ever since then, a Doom agent has been secretly training Cam to hunt and kill monsters. There's a new kind of ghoul in Sheridan. And you said there's some sort of team up. Ghouls and... A busybody. How yeah, do we deal with Milton? Get his human before... They get me? Let's call this train, baby. At a booth on his own at the very far end of the carriage is Ernest Baring, <laughs> agent of the Department of Emissions. Why shouldn't I kill him right now? be the same again. I know you say you hate what you are, but you're a good man. You're strong and you're courageous and you stand up for what's right. Killing Ernie, however much you want to, will change that forever. I don't know, I don't know how anyone else will feel about you after that. And they understand, Cam, they love you. They understand how angry you are, but I don't know what they're going to think about you if you do that. You got good people around you, Cameron. Shut the fuck up. This one, that raincoat, she's right. And I didn't do that. You surrounded yourself with them, so listen to them. Ernie, you're lucky she's here today. And I just slam him to the ground and I walk off and I start bandaging up my hand with whatever I can find on me. That's like restaurant car napkins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to follow Cam, but as I do, just turn back to Ernie and be like, you better make yourself fucking scarce, mate. You don't have to tell me twice. Jess, I'm sorry. I did that to you. No, I, I understand, Cam. I do. Best I can. I'm proud of you, you know? I can never see him again. I hope you don't ever have to. Thank you for stopping me. You're so welcome. 
the conductor comes back into this carriage. Roy, Fairyland. Oh, hello, Tom. Oh, something happened. Tom, you know you've got a fucking family, right? You know you've got people who care about you and love you. I've been told. I'm, I'm working it out. Well, fuck off working it out. Get off this fucking train. Stop playing little choo-choo trains and go and be with the people that love you. Because you, right now, are an utter prick. <laughs> you have people worrying about you every fucking day. Jess here, you've been worried for how long? Four years. Four years. She can't tell your mum and dad where you are because what she's going to fucking say, oh, he's a conductor on a ghost fucking train. I think she's fucking mad. They already see her talking to herself, talking to that fucking prick. Sorry, kid. And then she's going to talk about ghost trains. And here you are, handing out tickets, wearing your little cap, got your little jacket on. Oh, big body, big fucking billy bollocks you are. You know what, mate? I've got half a mind to drag you off this fucking train and drag you back into showdown and sit you down with your mum and dad and you can just tell them where you've been for the last four fucking years. Cam, Cam, it's not his fault, man. I I appreciate it, but it's not his fault. I mean, I don't think it's his fault. Tom? Roll plus charm. (laughs) Eek! (laughs) (laughs) That's a five, that's a seven, that's a minus one, that's a six! (laughs) Tom, the conductor, is throughout all of this, like, looking between... Like, pinned by Cam's gaze and, like, looking to Jess. And Jess, you see, like, confusion and, and hurt on his face. You get the impression he he thought this was, like, covered. Like, you'd had a conversation and that he sort of had permission to be doing it. Like, all of this feels like an issue that he thought was resolved. As he's looking between you and being rocked by this tirade, the sound of the train's wheels on the rails changes and becomes more erratic. The train shudders and shakes from side to side and from the doors at either end of this carriage, the vestibule doors, shadows deepen and smoke begins to leak and there is the sound of crumpling paper. I, no, I have to remember, I have to, I have to keep it. I am the conductor. The train needs a conductor. The train needs to be protected by the conductor. If I'm not doing that, then... At either end of the carriage, paper ghouls manifest. He can't remember. If he remembers, we're in big, big trouble. Well, I needed something to hear. Cam, can I ask that you uh, don't don't do that again? We clearly do, do need we need clearly need Tom as the conductor. So it'd be uh, much beneficial if you don't chat to him like that ever again. Um, that was uh, that was that was quite something. It's been a day. I, I understand that. Um, go hit some goals. I'm going to look after Tom. Graham, if you could uh, just make sure that we take Jess, that'd be great. Absolutely. Which which one are you taking? That end or that end? Uh, eeny meeny miny. <laughs> <laughs> one is sort of crawling over some of the unoccupied tables in this buffet car and the one at the other end has uh, swung up and is, is crawling over the ceiling to try and like get to the centre of the carriage and drop down. Uh, and you see that they do seem to be, again, fixated on the jets. Slice and dice! <laughs> hey. Right, okay, so I am running at a plus five <laughs> to hit these ghoulies. Will he manage it? Six, ten, fifteen, baby! Oh my <laughs> <goodness>. <laughs> Bye-bye, ghoulies! <laughs> so, as we know, it doesn't matter how much damage they do because it can't get through your armour, these these ordinary ones. Uh, so just tell me uh, how much damage you do and what it looks like. Uh, that's going to be four damage. Uh, how many am I seeing in front of me? Like, You're just seeing the one at the one. moment. I, I slice it in half, yep, basically, of and it just... <laughs> Yeah, just vanishes. <laughs> you slice it in half, the axe goes through the paper, through the smoke, through the shadow, there is that firework flare, and the axe embeds itself briefly into the back of one of the seats, right, right next to the head of a, of a like a little big-eyed boggart, <laughs> who <laughs> looks at you and goes, oh, oh, thank you. Don't mention it. I turn around and I start going down the other way, baby! 
Great, Graham, what are you doing? Uh, Graham's already got that one covered. Oh. Um, hopefully, if if the rolls go right. Um, so Graham is just going to turn round and produce a magnum and <laughs> fire it. <at> <laughs> Um, so it's plus two, so that is seven. You do your harm, it does its harm. It only does two harm, so it can't hurt <laughs> you anyway. And uh, yeah, I shoot it. Like a magnum is a, it's a big caliber for mm. a, for a pistol. So you punch a beach ball sized hole mm. in the paper shell of it, out of which boils smoke and shadow. Which this thing, knowing that it's beaten, knowing that its uh, its companion has been defeated, knowing that it. Do, that it doesn't see anything else in this carriage it can use to form a shell for itself. Mm. So it starts to flee, like creeping like a carpet across the floor to try and get out through the vestibule that it. I scream, arrived. don't let it get away! I withdraw the giant hell sword <laughs> and I attempt to spike it to the floor. It is moving fast. Mm. So uh, give us an act under pressure. Roll plus cool. Roll plus cool, which is us oh, plus one. It's not bad. That is a. Oh, mm. It's a 12. Oh, nice. I obviously I shoot it. It falls <laughs> to the floor. The smoke starts to escape and scuttle. Um, and Graham, with sort of like, because he's been he's been quite sort of sedate today, he continues that sedate sort of image, but moves much quicker than what the. It's like a, a hologram that is walking, but moving a lot quicker than it should be. And you just see him remove the tie pin and just very elegantly pierce the ghoul to the carpet. Yeah. Removes the type in. I don't know if we uh, fully described this before, but removes the type in and it turns into an absolutely enormous yeah, a giant cavalry sabre kind of. Yeah, a, hu- a huge a huge sword that's got sort of like tentacle, um, the, the, the quinell of it is sort of like tentacly. So it sort of mimics mimics me a little bit. Skewers this smoke and shadow mm. to the floor of the carriage. Shouldn't work. Mm. You shouldldn't be able to skewer mm-hmm. smoke, but it is pinned and from the tip of the sword where it pierces it, flames spread mm. and shred the smoke and the shadow. And as I do that, I turn to them and look at look at the, the other two and go, been nice ghouling you. <laughs> no. No. It's close. No. Uh, you get okay. the Okay. Where'd you get that from, by the way? That's a pretty cool sword. This! It's been in my family for generations. Oh. All the accountants get them. <laughs> oh, what? Hmm. <laughs> okay. For opening really big letters. I never ever want to go to your accountancy firm. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> you really don't. It's not It's not an ideal place. Uh, right. Got to get our safety briefing. Finally. Yeah. Yeah, Tom is sort of panting, like kneeling on the floor of the carriage with Jess protecting him. Um, Tom, um, Mr. Conductor, you're the conductor, you conduct the trains, you work on the trains. That's you right. You know all about the trains and that's all that matters right now. You. That's right, the train runs, the, tra- mm. the train is... Uh, Sheridan, England, Sunlit Uplands, Avalon, Albion. That's right. Inferno, Fairyland... Are you okay? All aboard. Where to? I think he's okay. This is fucked up, man. Isn't it? Yeah. I think we're going to the to Fairyland, and you were about to give us a, a safety induction. Oh yes. Oh, not for you, sir. You're perfectly safe going to Fairyland. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. You're a mortal, mortal friends here. Um, certainly need to watch their step, as it were. Uh, take a seat, and I'll talk you through the basics. Oh, okay. Great. <laughs> Very simple. Fairyland is a place of temptations for mortals. It's full of uh, pleasures and uh, excitements that your mortal brains can hardly conceive of. Do not give in to those temptations, my friends. For the more you give in to the temptations of Fairyland, the harder it will be to return to your normal lives in the mortal realm. Fairly simple. Don't give in to temptation in Fairyland. Is that why time goes wibbly? Oh yes. If you find yourself indulging in Fairyland, it can make time do very strange things. You can seem to be there for an eye blink, ex- enjoying yourself, and uh, then you come back on the train to England, and uh, you find that time has moved on without you. Right. I guess. Oh, fucking gonna... magic. 
Wait, Tom, I mean, Mr. Conductor, how do we get the train to pick us back up again? Uh, we run a regular service to Fairland. Okay. So just wait on the platform and a train will be along before you know it. Lovely. But no indulging. But there's no magic words, though, like in Sheridan. Oh, no, no. The, the magic words are because uh, parts of England are warded against the ghost train. They don't mind it in Fairland, they don't warn against it, so it just runs. So we just turn up and... Yeah. Okay. Right. Thanks, Mr. Conductor. Mr. Conductor. You can piss off now. <laughs> Mr. Oh. Conductor. Well, thank you very much. I'm only trying to be helpful. Doesn't seem to be too much to uh, ask a bit of politeness in return, and he bustles. <laughs> Jess is just going to watch him go, having no idea what to make of this emotionally. <laughs> just like, we're alive. Cool. So let me get this straight. When we get to Fairyland, all of our heart's desires, they're going to be put on a plate in front of us, right? Yep. And if we indulge a little bit, we're basically fucked. Yep. It's not so much that you'll be fucked, it's more that time could um, alter wildly. So as long as you're happy with that happening, indulge as much as you like, but no, if you'd no. rather time to stay as it is, don't. Uh, Squidward. Yes. Neither Jess nor I have the best impulse control in the mm. world. Any help here, buddy? I, I suppose I could, um, if you're happy for me to try, to sort of, again use magical um, resonance to, to dampen your your impulses towards um, what you're probably most likely to do. So just, just uh, inhibit. I was thinking more like um, add like a as a filter, you know? So the things we want to do, we want to find Clarissa. Yeah. You know, to not get not get dist- like yeah. limit distraction. Okay. We, I, I could give it. I could give it a shot if you're if you're if you feel happy for me to, for, to to do that. I think if you don't, I won't be coming back home again. Hmm. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, oh, we'll, we'll 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 give that a shot for. So if you if you could sort of collectively get well, to, to what? My only problem mm-hmm. is that it's. Well, it's. I'm sorry, Kit. It's not really me that has the bad impulse control. Right. It's sort of him. He's, let's be honest, Kit, you're going to be the one that if I go gallivanting off after something, it's going to be your fault. Is that is that completely fair, yes. though? Is, um... Yeah. I have been meditating. I'll have you know. <laughs> I've heard it gives very good results. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. So, can we do magic on you, or are you going to behave yourself? You can trust me, mate. You know you could. I don't need any of this demon weirdness to control myself. I know what I, I am focused. Mm-hmm. I would like you to try and do some magic on Kit as well, please. Mate. Right. Dude. Uh, so, um, if, uh, if, if Kit, um, Kit, if you could, wherever you are, make your way over to, uh, to, to, to Cameron and I will see if I can sort of... Um, do some do some magic on on the both of you to uh, uh, yeah filter out the the slightly more um, unnecessary impulses for want of a better word. Mate, this is bullshit. You know, you know, if he sees this as something that he's doing that's a favour, you know, he's going to want something in return. Demons always do, especially especially accountants. You don't want to be in hock to an accountant. Look. This is somewhat the pot calling the kettle black here, Kit. <laughs> if you thought there was going to be no ramifications of the way you behaved last time we were on this bloody train, there's another thing coming. Now, for once, would you please just do what you're told? Oh, well. I suppose that he did uh, help us with Milton. So is, is, he, is he... He's begrudgingly agreeing. Right, OK. Um... Kit, are you, are you in place? Is he in place? Yes. Right, okay. Takes a long drag, <laughs> blows smoke at the general direction of Kit and Cam, and we'll see how this all turns out. So who rolled a dice last? 
Has no, anyone, you. no one. Oh, it's me. So yeah. I get plus so one you, to this. So you get the plus one. Great. So I think how we'll work this is if you guys are tempted by something and want to resist it, we'll almost work it like when Briar is tempted to do <laughs> okay. mysterious things. And if this magic works, you'll get plus one whenever you do that roll. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Nice. It's good. 13. Woo! So we know that, you know, Graham's mm. magic is always, it blows mm. the smoke and the smoke coalesces. What does this feel like for Cam and Kit? In the same way that when you become inebriated through alcohol, everything lowers and you feel yourself being a little bit more looser, you start feeling yourself being sort of like, well, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> or like, mm, I don't know. You, the sort of Catholic guilt starts coming in. <laughs> uh, you're like, oh, no, that would, be, that would be bad if I did that, so I, shouldn't, I probably shouldn't. So yeah, it just it just feels like that. It feels slightly. Um, it feels it feels like you've got a, a foggy head, but in a different a different way. Sort of like a more sort of like a, a weight rather than a oh, what's going on? Oh mate, this feels weird. I, f- I feel I feel like I'm I'm being told I didn't keep all the receipts I should have kept. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. I don't even know what a fucking receipt is. I think Cameron's very still <laughs> because I think for the first time the rage is low ah. and doesn't quite know how to feel. Uh, and that's some extremes because it spiked when you saw Ernie there and now it's banked down again. Yeah, he's just like almost knocked for six. Can't quite compute mm. how he's feeling. So I think as I'm feeling quite, you know, quite relaxed for the first time in 14 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go and talk to the locals. Hey. And Use I, some of that charm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, still carrying a shotgun, a hunting rifle and uh, axe. Of course. I am black bike leathers <laughs> that are a bit too bulky. I'm going to plop myself down opposite a, a satyr that's just reading a newspaper. Hmm, quite the commotion in this carriage. I believe this is supposed to be the quiet carriage. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, when you... Around us for long enough. No, it's really a quiet carriage. Sorry. Mortals. It's behaviour I would expect more of my kin. Yeah, you satyrs, you guys like a bit of a party, don't you? Most satyrs don't lump us all under the same... You know, paint us all with the same brush. I no. consider myself a very refined individual. Not a fan of techno music, then? Ah. Uh, no, uh, it's a it's a very modern taste. Mine run more to the classical, my friend. Oh, I'm talking to the wrong fucking side. <laughs> uh, right, uh, right. I've got a question for you, uh, Goatee. Uh, very well, yes. I am very up to date on local events. You see that they're reading a, they're reading a newspaper. <laughs> I read the headline. Uh, so me and my friends, we we've heard a really about a really great party in Fay mm-hmm. Fayland. We're going to call it, you know, just for now. Techno happy place. Quite a few typewriters going at the same time, which is a bit weird. It's like uh, percussion instruments they use. Where will I find this party? Oh, mm, yes, I believe I heard about the uh, the the new venture that had moved into Fairyland. Very out of keeping with our normal sorts of uh, activities. Can you roll Investigate Mystery for me, please? Plus sharp. Come on, zero. That is a f- four. <laughs> well, can I help? Or do no, that won't help. Oh, help. Help oh. would only get you to a five. Oh, yeah, yeah. I could do another luck point. Oh. That would be two. And we kind of need to know where we're going, don't we? Uh, yep, yeah, so we're going to make that a 12. Great, okay. Ask um. two questions from Investigate Mystery. <laughs> Uh, when we get to the station, where, where's the uh, where's where's the techno fun happy party taking place? Oh, you you can't, you can't miss the techno when you get off the train. It'll hit you like a wall. I'm sorry to say, I'm pretty sure we can miss it, but uh, <laughs> thanks. The, uh, the the typewriters though, that's that's new. That's a little more a little bit more out of the way under the hill, as we like to call it. They like the quiet, those people with their typewriters. So uh, all the way across the cavern of revelers and down the second spiral stair. You've been very helpful. Thank you. Do you would you like it to stop, the typewriters? I think as long as it doesn't. I, I honestly think it's, it's good for a Fairyland to be diversifying somewhat. It's... 
the, the focus on pleasure and hedonism is all very one note, and it's been that way for millennia. So a little bit of seriousness, I think. Bit of drudgery anybody. is quite good, is it? I would hardly call it. Would hardly call it drudgery. Is that on the typewriter? Oh, of course, no, no, no. I have, an, on occasion, inspired mortals to labour at a typewriter as a sort of muse. Right. Well, I think we're done here. Thanks a lot. Um, I never want to see you again. Thank you ever so much. What's your name? Giorgio. Giorgio. Well, my little goatee friend, may we never meet again. Bye. Honoured. Honoured. Cam, I have never seen you so patient and polite. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know what? I think I didn't want to kill him. That's progress, man. Yeah. Honoured. Okay. Little bit. Little bit. (laughs) When I I kill him. Fair enough. (laughs) You can go away now, Giorgio. <laughs> Inspiring nothing but hatred here, buddy. I was here first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you keep him talking, Giorgio. <laughs> so, we're going to go through the cavern of revelers, down the second spiral stair. There they are. Right. Okay. And yep. uh, do, we, do we know how to separate Clarissa from Milton, or are we still just killing are Clarissa? Are we going for grab and I, run? I thought we were grabbing and running, not killing. No, this, this, this is this is what I'm making sure because I'm sorry, I, I, I sort of zoned out for a little bit there, and I think I've gone back a couple of plans. Um, <laughs> it was meet at six a.m. Oh, right, I've yeah, got yeah, the yeah, sandwich. Yeah, if yeah I, I, I remember. I remembered mine, so we're, we're we're covered on the sandwich front. Lovely. So we're we're nabbing Clarissa and bringing her to the oubliette, right? To the oubliette, right? Make it somebody else's problem, right? I think that was the plan, right? Well, no, well we figure out. We're not just going to leave her. In the oubliette, she's just, just a human. Well, we figure out. Awful how... human that, you know, nearly killed Gwyn. We don't. Yeah, well, for now, we're not gonna kill her. Right. Right? We're gonna lock her up and forget about her. No. Okay. We're going to remove her from the danger to herself and others. Better way of putting it. One, 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 one moment, one moment, um, and Graham is going to wander off down the carriage in the direction that Ernie went, and he's going to have a chat with Ernie. So, r- roll investigate mystery first. Okay. Because if you fail, you might not find him. Oh, no. It's a big train, right? <laughs> it's wandering. What? He's a big train, and you did slap him, and also break his enchantment, so... But if you roll well enough, you'll be fine. I had forgotten that I did all of that. Um, he would be well within his rights to stay away from me. Plus sharp, which is minus one. So, <laughs> no. It's minus one. It is uh, seven. Oh, seven. 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 Okay. okay. You, fi- you find him and you can ask him one question. <laughs> so I find him and he is somehow still managing to face me so that he sees me coming. Oh, he... He's no fool. Yeah. Like he is a tactical person, so he mm. has put himself where mm. he can see the entrance that you would have to come through if any of you pursued him. Yeah. And uh, I, cigarette in mouth, hold my hands up. I, I come in peace. I come in peace. Apologies for the slap earlier. Um, I hope you understand that was just because uh, you you hurt my friend, and it's it's just not very uh, not very not very pleasant. Something about him catching. It seems. Very, very much so. Very much so. I have one question and one one question alone to ask of you, and then I will not bother you any further. Um, what do you know about the connection between spirits, humans, and whether or not that could be severed? Should there be a connection between spirits and humans? And how do we go about it? It's not that usual for an actual connection to form. Bargains, yeah. Spirits and mm-hmm. humans, spirits and mortals form bargains, but for them to actually like get entangled, so they're actually connected, mm-hmm. much more rare, much more rare and tricky to disentangle. It's mm-hmm. very difficult to do it without harming one party or the other. But there is a contingency. Right. Our department come up with contingencies for most sort of situations. What you need is some sort of idol, effigy, that sort of thing to replace the mortal. Right. right? Needs to have some 
connection to them all. Mm -hmm. So your standard witchcraft stuff, your toenail clippings, mm. your blood's good, locker hair, something like that, to almost like trick the connection into attaching to the effigy instead of them all. Right. So we need to create some sort of, uh, some, like, a, like a voodoo doll. And then, then we can try and maybe yeah, do a little sort of. switch. And then it. when you, and then obviously you you disentangle the spirit from the mortal, get it to possess the the dummy mm. instead, and then obviously you like burn the dummy so mm. that it destroys the spirit. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. Well, you've been you've been very very helpful. Uh, th thank you very much. This line of questioning is making me worried that we're on the same road. Sorry. What? I don't know if uh, any of you lot have noticed, but the um, emission effect's been going a bit funny. Maybe we've noticed that, maybe we haven't. I'm... Uh, my mission here, right now, is to investigate that and what is causing it. And my intel suggests that a mortal bonded to a spirit might have something to do with it. So I'm worried, having just had a run-in with Cameron Jarvis that I'd rather not repeat, that your path and my path are about to cross again and cause nightmares and headaches for all involved. Possibly. <laughs> I, um... Ha. Tell you what. <laughs> oh, this is difficult. You're telling because me. I'm, my first instinct is to say, you lot go and do what you're going to do, mm -hmm. and I will follow up, mm -hmm. bring up the rear, and if you don't achieve what you're trying to achieve, I will swoop in and mop up. But I am very aware when Cameron Jarvis sets mm -hmm. his sights on something, there is often what we in the business call splash damage or collateral mm, mm. and so what I'm worried about is that if you take the first pass as it were mm -hmm. the situation is going to be unmop upable that does that does stack with our previous entanglements um, we have uh, Yes, they're not the, the tidiest, I think would be the, the best way of, of putting it. Hmm. Um. But you, notwithstanding the slap, I understand that uh, mm. things were, tensions were heightened. Yeah. You seem like a cool-headed and reasonable sort. Yes. What if you stall the loose cannons so that I can take the first go and maybe get in bish bash, do it all clean and there's no mopping up to do. Graham's head slowly imploding on <laughs> himself um, with the, the, the desperate attempt to unpick what the best course of action is. <laughs> He's gone on his own. He shouldn't have done this. <laughs> he needs backup, but no one wants to back him up because they all hate Ernie, and rightfully so. No, I'm really sorry. We're, we're, I don't think that's going to be possible, just given uh, how headstrong. You, well, you know, you know how 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 Cam can be. So I, th I think I think if you if you really want to get um, in there first, as it were, you're you're just going to have to do that, and we'll we'll deal with the fact we might come across you at a later juncture. Oh, I had a horrible feeling you were going to say that. Can you roll? You can't roll manipulate someone. C'est impossible. Oh dear. <laughs> to be fair, I need to just say, you seem like a reasonable he and did. nice person. So has, he, <laughs> has he risen to his was, estimation? Was he, was he being truthful? Oh, oh yeah, he, yeah, that's a good point. Where's Renko when you need that? <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't manipulate anyone. You can't. You can't. So you can't, you have no way of persuading him to do it your way. Yeah, I was afraid you might say that. All right. I guess all any of us can do is lay our preparations and be ready for the worst case scenario. And that is why we got up at six o'clock and we all bought sandwiches. Six? Oh, Cameron's slipping. We, we talked him down for 
four thirty. Well, that's more than I was ever able to do. Very well. I will uh, leave you to your um, whatever that is you're eating, and I will leave. He's eating something perfectly normal and lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Appears not to have any sort of detritus or mould on it. <laughs> Fool. This station is Fairyland. Please make sure you have all your belongings with you when you leave the ghost train. The train pulls up slowly, gradually to a stop at a platform, and the doors all swing open by themselves. The three of you step out of the carriage onto a platform. It, you, the platform has a little bit of give to it. It feels like it's sort of hard-packed earth rather than the concrete of the Sheridan platform. It's a little green. There are small blades of grass and mosses under your feet. But you step off the train into a wall of pounding, throbbing techno music. We'd be this close to the techno music as soon as we got off the station. George, I did say that we we wouldn't miss it. To be fair, wow! The Fairyland station seems to be in built into the wall of a absolutely colossal, enormous underground cavern, hewn out of black rock, beautifully carven. Rock crystal bridges crisscross the space at various different heights. Small floating chunks of rock float around uh, within the, uh, the aerial space with uh, red velvet ropes around them. <laughs> and the f- entire floor of the cavern is taken up by jumping, pogoing revelers. Dancing to the techno. The cavern is dark, apart from sprays of bioluminescent lichens and mosses across various parts of the walls and ceiling, and the rock crystal bridges seem to have their own inner pulsing luminescence as well. Up near the top of the cavern, radiating down onto all of the revellers, is a huge, deep red disco ball that paints all of the revellers, the entire uh, cavern, in deep red, orange, bloody hues as the revellers are dancing. (laughs) You can see that up on those bridges and those floating chunks of rock, there are people seated on sort of wide, long, circular couches with bottles of champagne or whatever it is that they're drinking here in Fairyland, whatever kind of strange potion. And you can just see at a glance that the folks down on the ground of the cavern, pogoing, dancing, reveling, bumping into each other, they're all sort of of a kind of fae that you would all be familiar with, like the kind of fae that you've hung out with with Briar. You see goat legs, you see uh, horns, you see uh, the the big eyes of prey animals in in humanoid faces, various different kinds of sort of woodlandish, slightly bestial forest kinds of fae. But then up on these bridges and in these uh, VIP floating islands of rock, you see much more like the uh, elf that Lord Cameron, Fancy Pants, <laughs> that Lord Fancy Pants, the elf that Cameron met uh, in Quarry achingly beautiful humanoid elves with long flowing hair and chiselled aquiline features, just with aristocracy radiating from every joint and bone and every pore, looking down and watching the revels down below. Right, we've got to go through this to get to the second spiral stair or something. Giorgio, are you still here? Giorgio has zoomed past you out of this carriage and has joined the revels. He said he didn't like this kind of music. <laughs> Do we have to go through it all, or can we go around it? I think there's only through it. Or would you go over it? 
If anyone wants to roll sharp, read a bad situation, might give you some information here. Okay. Not my thing. <laughs> plus one sharp, so I guess I'll do that then. That is a five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Plus your sharp. Yeah. Nine. I can't do maths. Okay. Can we help to make <laughs> it a can't. ten to get lots of things? Yeah. Who'd like to try and help? Well, help out my a plus cool, cool is negative one. I will go and I will help, for I am plus one cool. Mm. Amazing. And um, also, you know, this is a bit less weird to go yeah. This is very unlike the Inferno. Yeah. This is not like a comfortable situation, but you've walked realms I've, before. Matt, can I start? Does the whole world look like this cavern? It's th- This cavern is all you can see. Right. You've come off the train and this cavern appears to be... So there's no this, round it, because this is the... This, is this appears to be mm. the world. Right. Like, you would know from, like... We know that because of the emission effect, a lot of myths and legends about the supernatural are wrong in fundamental ways. But you know that fairyland is often also referred to as under the hill. Ah, mm-hmm. right. Gotcha. So it's sort of, there are ways yeah, in yeah. which this chimes with what you would expect. Gotcha. So Graham is first and foremost going to look up at the red mirror ball, take a long drag and go, is something familiar about that red mirror ball? I can't, I can't quite put my finger on it. Yeah, was there like a light bulb you left on, or something? Um, did you li- did you leave something in the office microwave? I don't. I feel like there was 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 there? Uh, did I did I forget to do something? Was there something? Uh, it's probably nothing. <laughs> the light it casts is very very majestic. Um, and I'm going to Reminds see... Reminds one of home, I'd imagine. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, yes. Bloody reds. Um, oh, a little bit more screaming. Um, this is more sort of happy, joyful tones, um, which I'm unused to. But that, here we go. Um, I'm going to uh, see if I can assist finding a way through. Eight. on uh, Seven to nine on help out. You can give Jess that plus one. So we're going to yeah. get mm-hmm. a full success on read a bad situation. Okay. But you expose yourself to trouble or danger. Sure. So we'll work out what that what that means in a mo. But in the meantime, between Jess and Graham, mm. uh, looking around, squinting through this harsh red light and trying to hear each other over this pounding music, you get three questions off read a bad situation. Okay. What's the best path? Yep. You could absolutely forge your way through the revelers, a uh, straight beeline across the cavern. However... Looking around for alternative routes, you can see that in places carved into the walls of the cavern are zigzagging staircases that take you up to those bridges. Oh. Okay, okay, nice. Which look much less crowded. Are there any dangers we haven't noticed? Oh, what an interesting question. <laughs> oh no, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> <laughs> there are there are so many things I could talk about. I'm going to give okay. you a, I'm going to give you a little laundry list and a little rundown. Oh god. <laughs> From, like, least important to, to most significant. Mm-hmm. Graham, you mentioned uh, it's a bit like Inferno, but there's not quite as many screams. Mm-hmm. Now that you, you think that, you do hear screams. From us, you know, finding slightly higher ground. Mm-hmm. You know, the ground here is very uneven. You're able to sort of get to a point where you can see over the heads of the, mm-hmm. the dancers. You can see that the cavern is kind of uh, roughly divided up into different areas. And while in most of it, people are just dancing and having a good time, there are fighting pits and jousts and other more brutal entertainments oh taking place. Right. Okay. So sort of going straight through the cavern holds the danger of running into some of those sorts of things. There are heavily armed Seely Fay jousting and brawling and all sorts throughout this dance floor and also looking around at those floating islands the observing rather than partaking fay it's difficult because graham and jess never met trelane the master of the hunt oh, mm-hmm. fancy pants. so they don't necessarily know know him by sight we do, but we do you know do, him by name you do know yeah. him by name but you do lord fancy pants what you <laughs> lord fancy pants you see uh, on one of these floating islands an individual that would... I mean, most of the individuals up here would fit the description of mm-hmm. Lord Fancy Pants, but you see one that definitely would fit that description. He stands out because while most of the fae up on these islands are sort of drinking and reveling and looking down at the the fights and the dancing and sort of being very supercilious about all of the, the common folk 
uh, reveling down below. This one is deep in conversation with another figure and seems to be rather than using the this floating chunk of stone as a uh, like a VIP observation platform is using it more as like a private area. So you see this elf in deep urgent conversation with another figure a figure dressed head to foot in harlequin's motley Ooh. right two large tassels off the head with bells on the end long curly toed shoes and uh, the whole costume is sort of patchworked and checked in greens and reds and blacks and whites but from the face of this harlequin leaks shadow and smoke. All right, lovies. It's me, Matt, your compare. I hope you all enjoyed Act 3 of Vigil, Fear Itself. There will now be an interval of two weeks, after which we'll be back with Act 4 of 5. Stay tuned now for the credits and the epilogue, but first, let's you and I take a quick leaf through the programme. There's a belated thank you in here. We got a lovely new review on Apple Podcasts in December, which I've only just noticed this week. Adjective Marcus says, A wonderful listen with players who feel like they're there to have fun rather than to cater to a monetized audience. Merely Roleplayers is my go-to for niche tabletop role-playing game actual play. The rules may read fine, but do people actually playing sound like they're having fun? Bravo! And Adjective Marcus gives us five stars, which I don't know if you know this, but uh, a five-star review is exchangeable for uh, a lovey air kiss on both cheeks, if you ever run into me in person. Thanks so much, Adjective Marcus. Really glad you're enjoying the show. There's nothing going on backstage next week, but if you're aching for entertainment... Our whole back catalogue is, of course, always available. You could also check out our guest appearances playlist on YouTube, which has us mixing with the likes of What Am I Rolling, Actual Play UK, and Sabotage the DM, and playing some different kinds of games. If you listen to us on YouTube, if perhaps you're listening to this on YouTube right now, just a quick note that YouTube recently changed how they handle podcasts, So if you are subscribed to our channel there, you've probably noticed some reshuffling going on. Lots of uh, videos disappearing and different, very similar but not quite the same videos popping back up in their place. Everything should have stabilised by this point, and if you're subscribed now, new episodes will go up at the same time as they go up everywhere else. Or if you want to take this week without a backstage episode to take a little break from our voices, you could check out The Billowing Hilltop. They're a Dungeons and Dragons podcast. I was lucky to meet a couple of the cast at Dragon Meet in December. They seem like lovely chaps. Here they are in their own words to sort of tell you what they're all about. We're going to give it another go. It's a bit, a bit more, a bit more zing, a bit of zing, a bit zing. Of zing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready? Hello, hello. hello. With a hello, no, no, no. hello, no, hello. No. <laughs> wait, wait till I get through the whole thing. Ready? Wait till. I... Hello, with a billowing hilltop. Hello, hello. Oh dear, <laughs> we're waiting for you to get through the whole thing. No, no. I mean, I thought I that was the whole thing. The whole thing is hello <laughs> with a billowing hilltop. <laughs> okay, that's the whole thing. Yeah? Okay, okay. That was right. <laughs> Uh, that pretty much sums up the show, but if you want to find out any more, you can visit us at www.blowinghilltop.com. Is it com? Does anybody know? <laughs> .org. Is it? It's dot .com. What do we do? What do we, what do we play? There's monsters. Um, Does anybody remember? Walking around. We don't know. And, yeah. And we will be delighted if you to join us around our table as we play Dungeon, is it 5th edition? Hello? Yeah, we think so. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Have we what played Dungeons noise and Dragons. In the background? <laughs> Sorry, that was me. I don't... What was that noise in the background? <laughs> there will be noises in the background as we play Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition through the classic Paizo adventure path, The Age of Worms. You can expect this. Oh! oh! Quite a bit of this. Um, I'm. Com- 
completely lost. This. Blech. This. I've got a bugbear in my underpants. And one of these. Hey, uh, oh, dear. Oh, dear. oh, dear. We're on Apple Podcasts and we're on Spotify and we're on TuneIn and you can find us on Twitter and you can find us on Facebook. Uh, and we uh, hope you join us. Thanks very much. of the Week, a role-playing game by Michael Sands, published by Evil Hat Productions. You can find Monster of the Week at genericgames.co.nz. Merely Role Players is a Foggy Outline production in association with Blackshaw Theatre Company. Until next time, if drama be the food of life, play on. So, you had an appointment to meet someone on the green at midnight, did you? Right. And I had to come a pretty bloody long way out of my way to keep it as well. And it's been on the books for forever and a bloody day. And they're meant to have people to remind them about it. And it's not even for my benefit. So if they can't be bloody bothered to turn up after all that, well, I say, that's their loss.